The cloud, a place where data goes to live. Surely a concept that seems to be ever growing in today's era. With the years passing and cloud computing becoming more and more relevant, it leads us to think if the technology we've chosen is ready for the future. For us, our tech is C -sharp and .net. So we looked for answers. And let me tell you, what we found was quite surprising. So let's get started. Microservices, the new paradigm. One of the buzzwords in modern cloud architecture is microservices. In essence, these are self-contained services that operate a particular function within a larger system. With .NET 6, Microsoft introduced advanced capabilities in c to make microservices easier to build, deploy and manage. Project Type, for instance, aims to simplify the development and orchestration of microservices in c and .NET. Now, that's modern architecture, but what about languages that are born in the cloud era? The language wars. c -sharp versus the cloud native. Languages like Go and Rust are sometimes dubbed cloud native, designed with modern computing paradigms in mind. However, don't count c -sharp out yet. With the introduction of lightweight libraries and features like Span generics for stack-only memory allocation, c -sharp is keeping pace, allowing for extremely efficient and safe code. For those interested in what modern c -sharp has to offer, we have a full video breakdown on what is new in the latest previews for c -sharp. And c -sharp is not staying behind on new tech. Make sure to check it out. All right, but can c -sharp adapt to serverless architectures? c -sharp and serverless architecture. Serverless doesn't mean there's no server. It means you don't have to manage it. Azure Functions and AWS Lambda both support c -sharp, allowing for on-the-fly scalability without the hassles of server management. This serverless approach helps c -sharp developers focus on logic rather than infrastructure. So the answer is clear, a resounding yes and now even more so. By the way, speaking of smart cloud solutions, today's video is brought to you by devarts.connect for MySQL, a game changer in the world of database development. With 17 years of development history, .connect for MySQL is not just another ADO.NET provider. It supports a wide range of MySQL specific features, including secure SSL and SSH connections. What sets it apart is its advanced Visual Studio integration, which provides a plethora of graphical user interface tools to boost your productivity. Whether you're working on .NET Core, Entity Framework, or even macOS, .connect for MySQL has got you covered. It's the ultimate toolkit for anyone looking to develop robust, scalable, and secure MySQL applications. So why settle for less? when you can have the best. Check out devarts.connect for MySQL and elevate your database development game. Containers and orchestration. From serverless to serverful, how does c -sharp adapt? Containerization is the way of the future and .NET has robust support for Docker and Kubernetes. With c -sharp, you can now build containerized apps with ease thanks to built-in features in Visual Studio and the .NET CLI, this provides developers the flexibility to deploy apps seamlessly across different cloud platforms. But now let's talk about data storage and retrieval in the cloud. Data, Cosmos DB and Entity Framework. Data is the lifeblood of any application. With Azure Cosmos DB's multi-model database service and Entity Framework's code-first migration, managing data in c -sharp applications has never been easier or more efficient, even at a global scale. We've looked at how c -sharp and .NET have adapted to the cloud, but let's not forget security, a cornerstone of any robust cloud solution. Securing the cloud. C -sharp and security measures. When it comes to the cloud, security is non-negotiable. With advanced features like Azure, Active Directory and the security capabilities integrated into ASP.NET Core, C -sharp offers robust options for identity management and secure data transmission. You can also take advantage of libraries that offer strong encryption and secure coding practices to keep your cloud applications safe. So we've discussed architecture, efficiency, serverless options, containerization, data management, and security. But how do you get started on all of this? Learning curve. 
Resources to upgrade your skills. Yes, diving into all these new paradigms and technologies can be overwhelming. However, c and .NET have one of the most robust communities out there. From forums to tutorials, from documentation to online courses, anything you want to build, there is a tutorial for that somewhere. Tutorials like the ones we offer on this channel. No matter if you just started learning c -sharp or you want to expand your knowledge to the clouds, we got you covered. By the way, make sure to check out our video about building and hosting an ASP.NET Azure Functions application. Get to know firsthand how powerful c -sharp can be in the cloud space. And with that, even though we started to look into this expecting to find some significant drawbacks or big unresolved issues, we were quite surprised how it was pretty challenging to find anything wrong at all. We even had an entire section ready for this video talking about why we would not use c -sharp for these applications. But an entire section just to talk about how there are extremely specific languages that do this really specific thing better than c -sharp felt kind of picky. Sure. .NET is not perfect, and far from it, but as an all-rounder tool to build your cloud-based applications, it presents itself as a really solid option. So we've covered a lot of ground today, from microservices and serverless computing to containerization and data management. Did we miss something? Do you have a prediction for the future of C-Sharp or just a question about C-Sharp, .NET or the cloud? Or do you have a good reason why c -sharp might not be the right choice? Let us know in the comments below. We love hearing from you. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching. And as always, happy coding.